Welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we came from the Reach. Back to Pan. Now, let's... Well, let's start by seeing what business we can do in Pan. I'm sure we have port reports. Guess I have two of them to give. Two Eleutherian Mysteries. A King's Idol Station. Visit a theater in a secluded grove. It looks newly constructed. They're rehearsing a play. Have I done that before? Familiar verse. An actor considers his script, coughs, and begins to recite. Brothers and sisters, the old order faces its destruction. Let us cheer our revolution. This sullen, solace, salaka. Who wrote this anyway? Well, that was a wonderful play. <laughs> Wait, we just keep going back? I wonder if what they're trying to say here is the word for one of the f other conjunctions. Remember, there's the three conjunctions that I know of that have been described to me. And then there was a fourth one that I learned about at uh, the, what, the Well of Wonders. I know it was similar to that. Solonaka or something like that. Let's do some more exploring. Uh, let's take this prospect, a sip of nostalgia, crockery to Langley Hall. Port rumors say that Lord Langley's staff is running short on tableware. Five crates of nostalgia crockery should be more than enough to keep them going. Langley Hall lies to the east, southeast of Pan. I think I have a crap ton of crockery. Yeah, I have 35. <laughs> Turns out we actually already have another prospect for Langley Hall. To deliver three bronzewood, so I'm going to do that at the same time. It does mean I can't take a huge amount... Um, a fuel and supplies. I was just thinking, do I need these concealed cavities right now? Don't I only need that if I'm going through a place that's going to search me? Like through relays or I think entering the Empyrean also searches you? I could change these out for armor. I want to keep them concealed just in case. Just in case. So yeah, Langley Hall should be somewhere about, probably here, east, southeast. Gonna have to go next to the Well of Wonders again. Let's go. Oh, hi. Vitas Varnus. 49% chance of success. Let's leave it. I don't have hold space for anything anyway. Gain two terror. You give the order and put the wreck behind you. The crew remain tense. Will that be their fate? One unlucky day? Where did that Scrivener go? It's not a Scrivener, it's a Scrive Spinster. Still no hold space, so let's just gain experience. Line of vision of the heavens.
Wait, what the fuck? There's something ghastly right here? Right, that close to Pan? That close to Winters Reside? What the hell is it? What is that? I think it's pulling me in. What the hell is that? Is it pulling me in? Maybe not. It looks like... Like stars. It's like a black hole or something. What the hell? Extinguishments plague Eleutheria. Eruptions of clotted night. So this is an extinguishment. An eruption of clotted night. That is a disgusting series of words. I don't even really know what it means. An abrupt yawning of night. Ah, oh, That's an undeparted. Holy shit. There are mysteries in the dark, but other things too, yes. Is it invisible? Did it go invisible? Oh my god. That thing is fucking terrifying. Oh my god. Holy shit. I'm not sure how I'm going to be able to hit it. Back up, back up. Those are very slow to get off, which makes me think they do a lot of damage. Okay, I got some good hits in, but I'm also at half health. I need to be careful. Take a lot of damage. Did I kill it? Yeah, I don't know what that was thing uh, that thing was that was left over and kind of moved. Oh, Jesus Christ. An undeparted, defeated. Is it dead? How is it not dead before with its tatters of flesh and its bared bones? There is admittedly rather less of it now, but is that enough? As you watch, parts of it fade from sight. The touch of your lamplight reveals them again, but it is enough to make you wonder if it's there at all. Which is true, the presence or the absence? Yeah, it kind of seemed like having my light on it was making it appear. And this kind of backs that up. Burn the remains, expunge it from the sky, spend fuel to reduce terror, and gain a tale of terror. I mean, terror's not that high, but... Pry out its eyes, ew! Behind its strands of twig-like hair, its face is studded with gems of many colors. Are those its eyes? 48% chance of success. Sounds like there's a chance, a pretty good chance, given it's about a 50-50 of gaining terror. Harvest its bones. Ugh. Can't do that. Let's burn the remains. Oh, that reduced terror by a lot. Good use of fuel. The thin air of the heavens fills with greasy smoke. The smell is overwhelming. Flames devour the corpse. Or is it simply fading from view again, hiding itself in the unseen corners of the night? 
Those things are fucking terrifying. Uh... What are you? Are you the... Yeah, you're the Liberation of Night people, right? Because I turn off my light and then they stop being angry at me? Yeah. Oh, I didn't realize they were so close to Pan. Well, I think I need to go restock. And repair. Back to exploring. Sometimes shades of amber spill from cracked runes around here, your lookout says. Eerie stuff. Let's go a little bit off the path to get this thing. Drill it. Yeah, let's go get that one too. Another Liberation of Night ship? No, I think that's Empyrean. Oh, it's so foggy. Whoa. Oh, God, Candlewind. <laughs> the scent of wax is heavy and heady like curdled milk or sweat running down f fresh meat. It inflames the appetite and renders your night sleepless. Ten hole. Oh, nice. Uh, so I want to go about here, so let's just go east. Hope the gods are happy, your driver says. The candle wind and the burrower's breath can hound this place. Sometimes you can find blind hermits or fragments of bronzewood here in the briars. At Langley Hall, you can be whoever you were meant to be, a crewman says softly. His eyes are hopeful. Are these naturally occurring, or did people make them? Sprawling house of numberless rooms. Founded by Lord Langley, it's a refuge for those willing to brave the dark of Eleutheria. Outside it stands the last lamppost, the furthest flung beacon of London life. Let's do all the prospects first. Free up some space. And I got a bargain on munitions. I'll just leave that for now. What do they sell, by the way? Fuel and supplies. And they export Thirsty Bombazine. A jetty off the edge of nowhere. A cottage the size of a cathedral. Mellow candlelight shines through its frosted windows like spilt treacle. Here, the vanished Lord Langley founded a home away from home. A London for the exiled, the lost, and the lovelorn. Distance is suspended inside... No one has ever claimed to have charted the entirety of the Limitless Hall. What? Distance is suspended inside. 
Those creatures that eat distance might find this place interesting. Enter Langley Hall. All are welcome here, provided that they are welcoming of all here. A man in a faded postal uniform greets you at the end of a battered jetty. He carries a shuttered lamp in one hand, its light the deep amber hue of the last lamp post. Hello, hello. A new guest. This way, please. Let's get you somewhere warm. He produces a set of keys and strides towards the oak-paneled front door of the house. He knocks thrice and then unlocks the door. This way. The sound of laughter spills out. Inside, an endless house party is in full swing. Guests who enter Langley Hall rarely leave. A hollowed hallway. This hall is the oldest part of Langley's project. From here, staircases wend their way to other rooms, halls, landings, and wings of the cottage. Guests sit on stairs, sing from the banisters, or promenade along the hall in search of friends. The closest door to the entrance is wide open, revealing a cloakroom the size of a village green. Fires crackle in seven hearths. Someone has set up a bar. Compile a port report. Langley Hall is widely considered to be a folly and a fool's paradise. Have those who say such visited? Good tidings. Langley Hall is a labyrinth of well-intentioned jollity. Parties snake from the front door to the back kitchen by way of a thousand bedrooms, bathrooms, billiard rooms, and ballrooms. The wine flows like water, and the hour is always hazily too late. Those who come here rarely leave, and those that do rarely do so for long. They have made a home of Langley Hall, or at least Langley Hall has made for them a home. Sign the guest book. Just a little formality, the post officer says apologetically. Don't worry, we don't have many here. He leads you to a little side room, where a buffet, replete with dips and breadsticks, has been laid out. He produces a huge leather volume from under a table and moves some hummus so that he can set it down. The smile indicates that this is volume three. Tell us how you'd like to be addressed. Whatever you like, who you really are, or who you want to be. He hands you the pen. Oh! Oh, that's so interesting. You can actually change... You can change how you're addressed. The thing that you chose in the beginning of the game. This will change how your captain is addressed throughout the game. That's really cool. So many to choose from. But I'm going to stick with Comrade. The post officer nods, blots the ink, and closes the book. A very good, Comrade. You are welcome here for as long as you care to stay. He shakes your hand. Uh, one thing, just a note of caution if you go exploring. We don't know how far the hall extends. I doubt even Langley does. God, that sounds so intriguing. Endless, endless, endless. Makes me think of, uh, makes me think of the game Echo. I actually have a playthrough of that up on my channel. I definitely recommend it. I love that game. Explore. Inquire after Lord Langley. Hang up your coat and hat. Hmm. Let's explore Langley Hall. A house bounded on the outside, but inside endless. Langley Hall extends as long as it likes, without interference from the laws of measurement, architecture, or probability. The byways of Langley Hall. Some floors are littered with rooms like the inside of a beehive. Others contain but a single bedroom. Doors rarely connect one or more rooms at a time. Lord Langley, having apparently preferred his guests, gets some exercise when moving from their bedrooms to the library in search of a nightcap. Langley Hall stretches on for lifetimes. To find anything in the labyrinth, you'll need to go exploring. Going from floor to floor, or even from room to room, one is often confronted with a staircase. These can vary between three and three hundred stairs, and there's no guarantee that on descending one, you won't immediately be confronted with one going up. So we're actually, we're actually going to do an expedition. It's literally so big, we're literally doing an expedition. 
Need 10 crew if I want to send out an expedition. Ooh, with my hearts? That's a terrible chance. Oh, there's a lot of things we can do, though. So we can just go out on expedition. Crew must trust. I'm, I'm not sure if this is going out with the crew and me, or just, like, sending the crew in my stead. Uh, but anyway, this involves the crew. 24% chance of success. This does not involve crew, but takes three supplies. <laughs> also 24% chance of success. This takes three supplies as well. 48% chance of success uses iron. Exchange an unlicensed chart for help with your map of Langley Hall. This will gain 15 staircase spelunking. <laughs> Becoming more familiar with the place, I guess. Little place, all sorts of, wow, lots of places that I can't go just yet. Oh my god, this place is going to be fascinating. Um, Let's hold on. Actually, since that's such a huge thing, maybe we should see if we can speak to Lord Langley first. It's only polite to introduce oneself to the master of the house and the host of this endless party. The post officer looks deeply uncomfortable. Uh, not sure I ought to say. His lordship's business. Uh, this is his party, see? He found the house and wanted guests. Invited those of us who, for one reason or another, weren't suited for what London had become. New London made him sick to his stomach, he said. The post officer runs a hand through his hair. I won't betray his hospitality, but I'll tell you what I know. If you agree that, if you do find him, you will respect his wishes. That's what this place is about. Respecting each other. Okay. You'll respect the intentions of Langley Hall. Or say you will at any rate. The postal officer bites his lower lip. It's the topic of choice here. Where's Langley? Have you seen Langley? He sighs. Anyone who says they know the answer is lying. But if you want a place to start looking... When he was with us, he favored a particular chair in the lounge. An old friend of his is still in the yellow drawing room, and he was on good terms with the cook. He considers you for a moment. What if he doesn't want to be found? What if wherever he is, he doesn't want to come back? It does seem that way. Unless they just somehow got lost in the endless hallways accidentally. But also, it seems odd that Langley would want friends over, right? Like, they wanted company, didn't they? This huge party? And then spend no time with the people that he invited over? Hmm. Okay. Let's explore. Let's get our staircase spelunking up. Exchange an unlicensed chart for help with your map of Langley Hall. An amiable cartographer has made a mission of mapping all Eleutheria. He resides in Langley Hall where he started his venture. Of course, I've not seen the whole thing, but I thought I'd best try to see the rest of the region instead. I'm not getting any younger, and that seems a more achievable goal. Though Paranessi is going to give me some trouble, let me tell you. The smell of champagne rises from below, along with the unmistakable scent of fireworks. Let's exchange a moment of inspiration for help. A sardonic music hall singer has been here for years. She knows her way around the place and will assist you in exchange for help with a song. Bloody marvelous! You're a... Uh, hmm... I wonder what this says. It doesn't even have the first letters or the last letters. F-U-C-K-I-N-G. I'm going to guess that's what it says. You're a fucking wonder you are. She recovers herself. Uh, I mean, it's all right. Liven things up in the drawing room for sure. Now, have you, have you been this way? Got a pen? Can't find anything in this place for love nor money. She pauses. Well, maybe love. She makes a few adjustments to your map. Okay, so 
I can go some places now. I could also continue to get more staircase spelunking. I mean, sure, I have quite a few moments of inspiration. Let's get a couple more. The smell of good hot pot rises tantalizingly through the stairwells. Let's do it once more. Okay, um... Langley was on good terms with the cook, right? So let's open the kitchen door. Uh, ribaldry? 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 Can be heard from within. The smell of hot pot wafts tantalizingly towards you. A find. Your exploration has borne fruit. You found the kitchen. You can practically taste the pepper in the air. Having found the kitchen, you'll always be able to return from the hollowed hallway. You are assailed with a wave of warmth and the aroma of bacon cooking on the cavernous stove. It seems that the real party is in here. Champagne corks pop. Someone is playing a vial. Cards are slapped onto the wooden table. A dozen flushed faces turn towards you, all beaming. Talk to the notorious flirt. She disarms would-be suitors with bon mots that stay just on this side of good taste. Bon mot. Am I pronouncing that right? Bon mot. Let me look that up. Hmm. I think it's pronounced bon mo, and it means a witty remark. Yeah. Let's talk to them. My goodness, even the curators would throw you back. She finishes her absinthe in one long gulp. You now have one tear. <laughs> Jeez. Mean. Can I just keep gaining tear? Yep. Infinite tear generator. The notorious flirt. So why can't I do this? Unlocked when you're lingering for a time at Langley Hall, and I'm not yet, apparently. Search for Lord Langley. Need a caged catch. Don't I have? Oh. Right, a cage a cage catch is an actual item, which means it's in the bank. Also, I'd have a 21% chance at that? That's terrible. Return to the hallway. Knock for admittance to the yellow drawing room. The yellow-white stuccoed door is shut. There are some formalities to be observed even here. You have found the way to the yellow drawing room, where voices drone from within. The room is warmed by a number of candles on silver trays. The flickering light renders the yellow wallpaper the color of melting butter. Volunteers creep about the room, topping up brandy, ironing fresh newspapers, and clearing away spent candles. A few faces glance up as you enter, but none look longer than briefly. If you wish to engage with the occupants, you must work to capture their interest. Ironing fresh newspapers. I've never heard of that as being a thing, but I guess it makes some sense. If you really want your newspapers to be very crisp. Mm, have to be lingering for a time. Yeah, so most of these things I can't do yet. Attempt to identify Lord Langley's friend. 24% chance of success. Let's go for it. You've been told Lord Langley's confidant is in this room. Failure. No surprise. You think you spy your target mournfully decanting brandy. Their hands shake. Their mustaches quiver. A nervous disposition brought on by the absence of their friend? Or by the terrible secrets burdened upon them which they have been sworn never to reveal? Almost certainly. What follows is an excruciating conversation wherein the person believes you to be no less than the very architect of their misery in London, which has reduced them to such a pitiable state. They spare no detail of the horrors done unto them, and pray you look to the state of your very soul. You leave confused, but remonstrated. Let's enter the little lounge. A door yawns open atop the next landing. Inside, candlelit sleep. Uh, 
The lamps are low, giving the room a warm, warm amber glow. The wood paneling is dark. The wainscoting is decorated with sleeping cats. Aww. A fire, orange as a harvest moon, blazes in the hearth. Guests slumber on the enormous sofas, or else whisper to each other from the armchairs. Wherever you look, there are glasses of mulled wine. If I rest here, this will cost you a crew member. What? Oh, oh. I was thinking, like, does my crew die? But no, I imagine they just like it here so much that they want to stay. Wait, I have a 49% chance to leave? What happens if I fail? Like, what happens now? <laughs> you attempt to leave, you really do. You're up from the armchair and almost at the door. And then you hear the chiming of a second hour and you're back in the chair. Did someone give you a glass of wine? Did someone stoke the fire? Did Signora... D Domenica promise to show you another trick with the mirrors? You can't remember. Gained one tear. Failure again. Same description. This place really does have a pole, huh? You make for the door. A few languorous hands extend from various sofas, footstools, and... Pouffets? Uh, but you pay them no heed. The doors open with a reluctant creak. The air is colder outside. The lights harsher. Climb up to the solarium. Light, white, and fervent spills from above. A frosted glass door, garlanded with stained roses, stands ahead. You have found the way to the solarium. Bathed in such radiance, all other light seems anodyne. Though in Langley Hall, it does not look out on anywhere in Eleutheria, where sunlight has been extinguished. Golden light pours through the glass dome, gilding the faces of the astronomers, aristocrats, and assorted hangers-on who congregate here. The conversation is polite, dignified. Plates of sandwiches circulate. Someone is passing around glasses of sparkling wine. Everyone looks out of the main window, which faces some distant sun, chained in the imperial sky. Langley's Hall draws some parts of itself from farther afield than others. Make polite conversation. This will trade tea for a ministry stamped permit. One tea for one ministry stamped permit. That would be really good. But you need five affiliation with establishment. That's really high. So maybe I should hang up my coat and hat. You plan, you plan to be here for a while. You run the risk of wanting to come back. The hall engenders dreams that weigh like an anchor on the dreamer. I wonder what they mean. What? How exactly does that risk manifest? Hmm. Well, let's let's finish finding new places before we do that. Just to get the lay of the land. upon the bathroom. Oh, that is a new thing, yeah. Okay. Inside, you can hear running water and the sound of someone being indecorously sick. You have finally found the lavatory. Awesome. <laughs> There's a queue for the stalls. A notorious vaudeville act is occupying the nearest and is emptying their stomach noisily. A cluster of lesser lights has assembled around the door to ostentatiously offer sympathy. Someone has set up an impromptu bar by the sink. <laughs> Perched on an upturned bin, a fiddler plays along with a trombonist. A flautist waits for their time to interject. Actors, dancers, and poets take turns performing, entertaining, and competing with their peers. What the hell is this a bathroom? There's a bar in the bathroom? And performances? <laughs> Uh, I just came to use the bathroom. Costs one sovereigns. Thank you. A brief moment's respite. The gilded fixtures of the stall. The warmth of a bath all to yourself. A glass of something to calm your nerves. Outside the door, an alto sings an aria. She powders your nose for you on your departure. Thank you. Return to the hallway. 
Okay, so now we have a crap ton of places discovered. I'm going to leave. The post officer escorts you to the dock. Not good to go out in the dark alone, comrade. He shadows you all the way to your engine. He waits on the platform as you make ready for departure. Even as the dark rolls in to swallow your engine, the amber light from his lantern lingers. Thanks. Yeah, that post officer seems super nice. It's getting really laggy from all the text that I built up in there. Okay, well, I think this is a pretty good place to end the episode. Let me just leave and then re-enter to make sure the game saves. I hope you've enjoyed so far, and when I return, we're going to explore even more of the endless hallways of Langley Hall.